Hello and welcome. Recently, I shared this map with the animated line of our EV road trip on social media, and a lot of people really enjoyed it, and a few people reached out and asked how I made it. So I'm going to run through the process of building this in Apple Motion. It should just take a few minutes, and you can create something similar really easily. In this tutorial, we'll focus on making the path animate and dropping in the icons at the right time. Adding sound effects and text is fairly easy, and as an added bonus, we'll animate the camera a little bit so you can zoom in or change the focus of your map. We're going to start here with opening up Motion and selecting a new Motion project. Broadcast HD 1080 is how I export 2997 frames per second, and we're going to set it to 20 seconds and hit Open. And here's the interface. Up at the top left, you can see Library and Inspector. Library's built-in stuff and effects. Inspector is where we will be looking for all the details about what we have selected. Then we have uh, the project and our main pane there for doing things, uh, our canvas. And then below, we have our timeline with the different uh, tracks and layers. So usually, I will do this on two screens and have my canvas on the second screen uh, just to have more real estate for those layers. What's great about Motion is it's formatted a lot like Photoshop where when you're doing a 2D project the layer on top is the one on top and it's really easy to just keep everything stacked up exactly how you want to see it in layers. So let's get started and we'll go up here to import and as we click import, we'll bring up a folder I have on the desktop already, example graphics, and we'll open that and select those items and bring them in. And then I'll walk you through them. But as we get started, as we now have things in here, you see we have our layers on the bottom, and then we also have them up on that near the canvas. So I'm going to close those on the canvas because I don't need to see things in two places. So first things first, like I said, the layers are kind of layered up like Photoshop, so I'm going to make sure my bottom layer is that map that is just a screenshot of a Google map of Minnesota. So I figured we could start with that. So I'm going to turn the other layers off by checking that little blue check mark next to each layer. Turn those off and we'll just focus on the background for now and drawing our path. I like to take the screenshot but then zoom in so you don't see the details around the edge, the scale of the map, or the little icon at the top right hand corner or the top left hand corner. So I'll scale that up and here you can see in the inspector is where I'm adjusting the scale. You can actually drag on those blue dots on the side of the image, but I tend to do things in the inspector. And so I've got my Bezier tool here for making a unique shape. And you can zoom in onto your canvas. You can see the scale on the upper right hand corner is zooming in and out as I use the trackpad to gesture that larger and smaller. Pretty intuitive and I just traced the path of the roads I'm following. So we'll zip through this because, you know, really all that matters is the start and the end of it. But you can zoom in as you're going to make sure you get the little details of the road depending on how closely you want to follow those. And I'm just making an example trip here as if we left our home, went up to two harbors, did some stuff up there, then went up to the new supercharger in Bemidji, Minnesota, and then back down through the central part of the state, back toward the Twin Cities. And as we're coming to the end of the shape here, if you didn't want to close this loop, you could just hit enter at any time, and that would leave an open shape. But we're going to close it up here by clicking on the first point, and then that's going to fill in our shape. And we'll back out and go up to the shape tab in our inspector, turn on the outline, and turn the fill off. Then we'll go down to the outline and change the color to, I like a nice Tesla-like red. And then change the width of that outline to 10 to make it stand out and show our path nicely. So with that Bezier shape still selected, we are going to look at these bottom sliders for first point offset and last point offset. And slide them back and see which one is taking you the way you want to travel. This is going backwards as I drag the last point offset, and so I'm going to keyframe the first point offset instead. And we'll start with that at 100%, 
and we'll set a keyframe but first we're going to move in about a half a second just so we have some room for transitions and mark a keyframe there and then determine how long you want your animation to last we're going to go about 12 seconds and drag that slider back and it automatically puts a keyframe there so if we play that back see our line goes up to two harbors up to Bemidji and back down great so that does our path and that's pretty straightforward so now we're going to look at adding the little graphics along the way so I'm going to move the playhead to the point where our first supercharger experience will be and so I'll drop it right there and then we will open up the supercharger icon now you can see this graphic is way too big and so we are going to scale it down in the inspector going to properties and make sure we have the right layer selected go to properties scale that down however we want and then move it x and y to where we want to have it sit and obviously you can spend a lot of time playing around with getting this just right but then you go back to the timeline and as long as your playhead is in the right spot press the I key for an in that will make that layer start at that point so if we go back to the beginning then we can see it play through the line past that point and the supercharger pops up and there are fades and all sorts of effects you can add to things but we're just keeping this simple for this example now I'm going to add a bunch more superchargers in here so we're going to control click or right click and select duplicate and then we've already moved the playhead so hit I to make that new layer come in at a different time and then adjust the placement of that supercharger we're going to put this one by Duluth get it dialed in here and then we'll repeat that process in high speed to add one for Bemidji clear water and then we're done with superchargers so that looks good we've got all our superchargers and they come on right in the point in the path where we want them to but to spice it up let's add a few more graphics I'm gonna click that blue check and open the hotel icon I have here move that into place that's already small so we aren't going to need to resize it and let's pretend we had an overnight stay in two harbors got that where it needs to be and then click on that layer and hit I so that endpoint is at the correct time and then we're going to say we did another overnight stay in Bemidji so let's duplicate that layer and change the position get it dialed in here and again come down here and hit I to set that endpoint and as the path passes by those icons turn on now we're going to add a couple more for spice got a little canoe here and when I imported that image it was from a screenshot a PNG of a screenshot so you see my that image is much bigger than the little icon itself so having to move it into a different position uh, just to watch out as you import things that sometimes they might not show up quite where you expect if you don't have your images right again setting that in point to where I want that to appear on the path and then let's say we encountered a bear somewhere so we'll turn on that layer and decide where he's going to be and we'll say we found him up by the lakes there again hitting the in point and getting our path to where we want him and get him placed just right so now let's look through that whole thing replay it and we got the supercharger in Hinkley up to two harbors for the hotel another supercharge in Duluth see the black bear hotel in Bemidji kayak supercharge in Clearwater and then back home and that all looks pretty good and we'll add a little motion into this but first I want to clean up these layers and so I'm gonna shift click all those supercharger layers and then control click to put them into a group call that superchargers rename the Bezier in as route and then I will put the hotels in their own group too so control click make a group and call that hotels close those up 
and that just simplifies things a little bit. So now let's go to the overall group, and there are a couple different ways you can add some camera motion into the project. And the first is just by animating that whole group all together. So setting keyframes for the position, scale, and rotation if you wanted. And maybe moving that keyframe in a little bit when our animation starts. So we'll start with the wide shot, and then as that animation's ending, we'll set new keyframes for where we want the end shot to be. So we'll zoom in on that group and change the position to center it up a little bit. And once we have that, we can play it back. And we just have a nice, simple motion moving in here. So a lot of times I'll do something like this if I want to show, okay, here's the whole state if people aren't familiar with where I am, and then zoom in to get a little more detail on the path. And you can also add some rotation in here. So we're going to make sure our group is selected, go up to Properties, and change the rotation on the x-axis. So I added some rotation and moved around the placement a little bit. I played through and realized I didn't set keyframes for that. So I'll go back to those first keyframes, fra put a keyframe on the rotation, and then go to the end keyframe and set a keyframe for rotation there. So now when we play it back, we have kind of a the map coming up as if it was on a table and now coming up as we're looking right above it. And so it just adds a little flavor to a pretty simple map. Now there's another way you can achieve this without doing the specific keyframing, and that is with uh, camera behavior. So we're going to delete those keyframes and set everything back to, we're going to reset the parameters back to zeros. And now we're going to add a camera. We're going to switch to 3D. Really, that's only affecting the camera. The group is still 2D, but it gives us controls for the camera in 3D space. And when you add a camera, you start out with the framing that you have set. So the camera assumes the viewer's point of view, and then you can adjust it from there. And so we're going to add a sweep behavior to the camera and set the tilt to X. Uh, we're tilting, we're sweeping on the x-axis, and we're going to just change our perspective a little bit. And so we're going to start at 20 degrees and end at zero. Then we're going to add a dolly effect to have this push in. And so we're going to dial in where we want our end state to be. Press O to set the out point. And then we change the distance slider up here in the inspector to get it to the right end state. And when we play that back, you see we have the both the dolly and the sweep making a nice camera move there. Now this is still a little off center, so I'm going to keyframe the camera position. And so at the end, we're more centered up on our path, like we were with the other keyframes. So now we have a really nice move, but you can see at the very beginning it jumps a little bit. So I'm going to drag these effects back so that the moves start at the beginning as we're zooming in. Otherwise it goes, goes from not affecting the camera to affecting the camera and we see that jump. When you're happy with it, you're gonna go up to the right hand corner and to render and I like to set the quality to best. Then go file, share, export movie. That brings up the little window where you can change your settings. If you want a different video flavor or do video and audio, if you have that all built into the project. Next, then name your project and save. 
We'll take a look at the final result of what we did here, and then an example of a more organic look I made for the Frunk Full of Diapers road trip series I did last year, with hand-painted and drawn assets for a different look. Apple Motion is pretty intuitive, and I love the real-time playback. I kept this pretty high level, but if you want to learn more in-depth, Ripple training on YouTube has tons of free tutorials, as well as paid courses to get really in the weeds. Simon Ubstel is another great resource with in-depth tutorials, great effects, and has a great mind for how to approach things in motion. They're not sponsors or affiliated in any way with my channel, I've just loved their content for the last 10 years. I'll share links to them in the description below, but if you have any questions or there's something you feel I missed, feel free to ask about it in the comments. Also, let me know if you enjoy this kind of thing, it's pretty different for this channel. But thanks for watching, and have a great day.